right, today we're going to review graphing exponential functions. Let's first review uh, what an exponential function looks like. So we have two formats, f of x equals a times b raised to the x power, and f of x equals p times 1 plus r raised to the x power. The y-intercept is a very important key feature in the exponential function. In the first format, the y-intercept is represented by the a in front of the parentheses. And in the second format, it is represented by the p that's in front of the parentheses. The base, which is the number inside the parentheses, will model the change that's happening in the function, and the base will show whether the function is increasing or decreasing. The x, which is the variable in the exponential function, is usually representing the time if it's in a real world scenario. Let's look at those growth and decays a little closer. When the base of the exponential expression is greater than one, then we are indicating a growth. So we have two examples here. We have f of x equals 0 0.01 times two raised to the x power, and that two is definitely greater than one. And we have f of x equals 0 0.5 times 1.04 raised to the x power. So both of these are a growth because the number that's inside the parentheses is greater than one. As a graph, an increasing or growth function starts from the left, going from the left to the right, increasing. So it's going to be going upward as indicated by this graph. A decay is when the base of the exponential expression is between zero and one. So we have uh, two, two examples here. We have f of x equals 2 times 0 0.5. And we have f of x equals 100 times 0 0.97 raised to the x power. Both of these are showing a decrease or a decay because our base inside is less than 1 but greater than 0. The graph is showing a decay or a decrease because from left to right, just like you read, it's going downward. So let's look at some graphs and decide which graph here models the function f of x equals 2 times 3 to the x power. So if we're looking at our function, recalling what we just discussed about the y-intercept, we're looking at the y-intercept, the a that's in front, is our going to be our 2, which is our y-intercept, or where it's crossing the y-axis. The y-axis is, remember, the vertical line. And so we're looking for a graph that is crossing the y-axis at 2. So here we have one that's crossing at 2. We have one that's crossing at 3. We have one that's crossing at 1. So the first choice is definitely the correct answer. Now, if you're unsure from looking at the actual function, you can always use a graphing calculator to compare the graph that they give you to the graph that you put in your graphing calculator. So we use this um, very friendly graphing calculator here at FLVS as desmos.com backslash calculator. So take a moment to pause the video and open that website up and go ahead and give it a try. Okay, so here I have desmos.com open, opened up and we're going to go ahead and enter that function. You do need to write the F parenthesis X parenthesis and then we're going to put in two parenthesis three, parenthesis. And now to enter the exponent, you're going to do the shift and then hit the six for that caret above the six and then put in the x. Okay, and when we do so, you're gonna see the graph come up and right here is showing us that it is crossing at zero comma two, which is the y-intercept indicated by the equation and the graph. This is a great graphing calculator and you may want to bookmark it so that you can use it not only for this test, but for the semester exam. Okay, so let's try another one. 
So which graph models the function f of x equals negative 4, parenthesis 2, close parenthesis, raised to the x power? So using that information about the y-intercept again, we're going to be looking for a graph that's crossing at negative 4. So here we have one that's crossing at negative 1. Here we have one crossing at negative 2. And here we have one crossing at negative 4. So this third answer would be the correct one. Again, if you're not sure from looking at the graph, you can definitely put it into desmos.com backslash calculator to get a graph of your own. Now, you're also going to be able to compare functions um, in different formats. So we're going to talk about three functions here, and we want to know which one will have the highest y-intercept. So let's start off with a graph. So here we give, I'm sorry, let's start off with a table. So here we have a table, and recall that uh, when we have f of x, f of x is the same thing as y. So these are actual points, x and y, x and y. And remember, we just talked about when we have a y-intercept, our x value is going to be equal to 0. So we're looking for a point that says 0 comma something. So right here we have the 0 going with the 160. And so that indicates our y-intercept. Part B, or section B here, we have a graph given, and we're looking again for the y-intercept, and we can clearly see that on our graph. That is 0, 50, and so our y-intercept is going to be 50. So our first one is 160, our second one is 50, and now the third choice we have it written as the function format, and so we have it written in f of x equals a, parenthesis b, raised to the x power, and our y-intercept is our number in front of the parenthesis, or our a, and in this case, that's 200. So which one has the highest y-intercept? Well, that would be choice c. So let's look at this type of problem, um, our function format. This one looks a little different because we don't have our a and b raised to the x power. Here we're just given 4 raised to the x power. So one way that we can do this is definitely using our Desmos calculator and plug that in and figure out what graph it looks like. Or we can also plug it in by hand and figure out what our y-intercept would be. In order to find our y-intercept, our input or our x value will be equal to zero. So in our equation or in our function, we're going to replace the x with zero. And anytime you're raising a number to the zero power, it always equals one. So our first point is going to be zero comma one. So that's why we're here at zero and we go up to one and that's where our first point is going to be. If we wanted to go ahead and plug it in and plot it with by hand, we can also do our x value as 1 to get another point. And so that'd be 4 to the first power, and 4 to the first power equals 4. So we can see here at our 1, we're at 4 on this graph, and so that is showing our exponential function. And you could continue on um, repeating this as you wanted to fill out a table if you would like. So how would we graph this one? This looks a little more complicated because it has a fraction. Again, you are more than welcome to use that desmos.com backslash calculator to get a graph going. Um, or we can use our input or our x value equal to zero and figure it out. So anytime we have a number raised to the zero power, that's going to be equal to one. So we have one plus three and that equals four equals 4. So our first point would be 0, 4, which here at our 0 for x, we have 4. So that's our first point, or our y-intercept. And then we could also do that for 1 if we wanted to. So we could have 1 half raised to the first power plus 3. Well, 1 half to the first power is just going to be 1 half, and 1 half plus 3. So we're going to get 3, 
and one half. So our answer would be three and one half for our point here. So at our one, we are going to go up to the three and halfway between three and four is three and a half, which is right here where our graph indicates our point would be. If you have any further questions or need more help with these concepts, please contact your teacher directly. I know they'd be, they would love to help you with this. Thank you.